Well, Karis, let's start chronologically. In the first half, you guys moved the ball with no issues despite all their length. Why did you guys have so much success, especially on the offensive end early? Uh, I mean, we were just attacking from, from the get-go. Um, we were knocking down shots, passing the ball well. Um, I think we got them in the, in the one-on-one pretty early. And uh, we got some transition baskets as well. Defensively, they were able to penetrate and do in the second half what you guys didn't allow them to do in the first half. What changed? Um, I'm not sure. We'll have to watch the film a little bit. But um, I think we, we were kind of tentative to foul a little bit, um, along with tired legs maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to watch the film, though. Take me through the final 60 seconds, which seemed to take about 20 minutes, and the emotions going through you guys. Um, I mean, we had a couple turnovers, but obviously the huge charge by Jabo. Uh, it was a great defensive play. It was kind of like the Syracuse game last year. And so regardless of who you're going to play on Sunday, what's the biggest thing you guys need to improve upon to reach your second straight Final Four? Um, probably just our defensive intensity for the full 40 minutes. I think we played great defense at times, and uh, at times we let up a little bit. Karis, we appreciate the time. Best luck on Sunday. Thank you. Everybody looked up at the scoreboard and said, wow, these guys were offensively explosive in the first half. But what about the defense that you guys played, especially forcing Stokes, Maimon to the baseline and the rotation to the wings was so good? You know, we understand that their bigs were, were very effective coming into this game and, you know, both being around 6'8", 260, that's, that's pretty tough to stop. So, um, you know, Jamo and Glenn did a great job of guarding them today and forcing them into tough shots. What changed in the second half? They did a great job defensively. They kind of took us out of our rhythm a little bit. Um, you know, we missed some shots we normally make, um, and they were doing a great job of attacking on offense and, and getting easy baskets around the rim. What was the conversation that last minute through all those timeouts and reviews? A lot of time to talk. Yeah. You know, just get just get the ball in bounds. That was the main thing. We were trying to set up, you know, different actions to get did a clean look in bounds, and um, you know, we were just trying to not turn over the ball. Biggest focus now on your day off on Saturday as you get ready for Sunday. Uh, it really just depends on, on who we're playing. You know, if, um, we're going to have to look at the sky report and, and figure out what exactly we need to focus on for each specific team. Nick, thanks for the time. Congrats. Good luck on Sunday. All right. Thank you very much. Glenn, last couple of weeks, it seems like you've made a concerted effort to be more aggressive, especially early in games, and it looked like you did that same thing here tonight. Yes, sir. You know, I just wanted to go out and play with confidence. That's something that my team needs, and um, I felt like we had a mismatch on the offensive end, you know, not just necessarily just them. Um, and I tried to attack my man and get down the lane. Um, you know, he wasn't able to go, quite guard those things, and then when they started helping off, I just tried to find my teammates, and we knocked down those open shots. Both on the offensive and defensive end, did you guys come into the half after that first 20 minutes thinking, that's about as good as it could get. Um, yes, we did, but we know we could still play better basketball, you know. But we, we didn't doubt them. We knew that they, um, you know, could come back, and uh, which they did. They're a great basketball team, and they play hard all night. And I know, as your coach, Bakari Alexander, told me when we were walking off, he said, Rick, it's all about survive and advance. You do and you will. Now what's the attention turned to as you get ready for Sunday? Um, you know, whoever we have, it's, it's going to be another tough game. But I have no doubt in my mind that, that myself and my teammates will come out, um, you know, calm, composed, and confident. That's something that we've been doing all year. And uh, I'm sure people will doubt us. You know, we've been getting doubted and, and felt slighted all year. So um, it's our job to go out there and play, play Michigan basketball, and I think that we'll continue to do that. Glenn, I know that their coach, Conzo Martin, family friends with you guys as well. When you get a chance to talk to Coach Martin, what do you say? Um, you know, I just see him in the media room, and he, he's told me to tell my dad and mom hello. Um, you know, he's a close family friend. Um, you know, he was my dad's roommate in college at Purdue. Uh, so he's a great guy, great coach, and, and he has done a lot, of, a lot of things for Tennessee, and I've been following him. Against anybody else, you root for Conzo Martin in Tennessee, but tonight, obviously, pulling for the maize and blue Michigan. Glenn, thanks for the time. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, John, let's do it first half by second half, because I imagine when you came in after the first 20 minutes, you had to be ecstatic about what your team was doing on both ends of the floor. Well, we were pleased, certainly, you know, uh, up by 11, and it, it was a good start for us. But I, we know, you know, it's this time of the year. You're just not going to beat the team by 11 again in the second half. So we came out in the second half. I love the way we played, and then down the stretch, they made just enough plays. Uh, we had some turnovers in the backcourt. We had eight of them in the backcourt that were, were deadly for us. Uh, we're better than that, and that really let them get back in the game. Until the last 10 minutes or so, though, your guys did such a great job, especially down low, keeping Stokes in the baseline, yep. forcing him to kick to the wings, and the defensive rotation yeah. was so solid. Yeah, our defense was really good for the most part up until they, they started driving it at us late, late, in, the game, or late in the game. And uh, but we did a wonderful job. Jordan Morgan, I'm just telling you, he was insulted all week that we were practicing double teaming him just in the event that we needed it. He was took it as an insult. Coach, we're not going to need to double team. And I said, okay, all right, all right, all right. But just in case you get in foul trouble, coach, we don't need it. So we practiced it all for nothing. Finally, John, you said yesterday, everybody wants to ask about individual matchups. Sometimes they're not worth a darn. You said it's all about getting leverage at the right times. Mm -hmm. How did you guys do it at the end of the day? 
Well, you know, it was it was difficult to get some of our guys. I probably should have got Glenn more involved today. Uh, he he got off to a great start, and I probably should have done more with him looking at his stats. But you know, Nick does some great things. What I like about Nick is Nick really sees the court great. He doesn't necessarily get points, but he sees other people. Uh, but we 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 had to use a variety of things, and, and like I said, that is a very under well well the 13th best defensive team in the country. We can see why in the second half when it really tightened up. John Beeline and the Wolverines, one win away from a second straight Final Four. Coach, congrats. All right, thanks very much.